Hi everyone and welcome to Bassendine Oval. We've reached the penultimate week of the 2010 WAFL season and it is the preliminary final. A resurgent East Perth looking for an incredible eighth consecutive win in the back half of the season and if they can manufacture one here today against the team that finished second, beaten only by Claremont for the minor premiership in Swan Districts, it will be a fairy tale finish to the season. The Tigers are in a holding pattern at the moment. There's quite no doubt uh, some of their match committee and indeed some of their players will be lurking here at Bassendine Oval today just keeping an eye on who their opponent will be next Sunday afternoon in the season decider at Subiaco Oval. Two highly experienced uh, men at the helm and I say highly experienced Brian Dawson may only be in his third year at the helm of Swan Districts but he has a long background in sports science and an involvement in the sport of Australian football through the West Coast Eagles and the likes that goes back a very long way whilst Tony McHale is eyeing his fifth Premiership as a WAFL coach and that would put him right up in the very elite. Well we are at this point of the season by virtue of what happened last week with the two semi-finals. Let's just recap the scores in the opening round of the final series. It was a tight affair down at East Fremantle Oval in our televised cutthroat first semi. In fact the Sharks held a one point lead as you can see at three quarter time before East Perth was able to close out the game by 14 points and arrive here today to play against Swan Districts, who for the second time in a row against Claremont this season are on the hands of a fairly significant defeat, this time 50 points after they had beaten Claremont by 33 back in round seven. And when they met for the second time in the home and away series, they had a very thrilling draw here at Bassendine Oval. The Colts and Reserves preliminary finals have been decided today. The Colts uh, semi-final was actually played down at Claremont Oval and it was a real shock for the Tigers. In the end, that match went to a golden score situation. Points were level at full time, 77 apiece. Bill Thunder snuck in a behind in extra time and they have advanced to next weekend's grand final against East Fremantle. Whilst the winner here today in the reserves was East Fremantle in uh, a thriller, getting up 69 points to 58. In fact, I think that might be the other way around. Our graphic might be incorrect there. It was East Perth winning 69 to 58 and they go forward to play Claremont next week. So the Tigers, a uh, bit unlucky earlier today, beaten by a point in sudden death time. Extra time in the Colts. Otherwise, they would have had all three leagues, Colts, Reserves and League, vying for premierships next Sunday afternoon. That is quite some record. As it is now, they will have two teams in and East Perth could have two as well if they're able to get up here this afternoon. Well, as I mentioned, the two men at the helm have been around football circles for a long time. Time. Tony McHale's name has been linked with the WAFL from way back in 1974 when he played in a premiership for the then Old East, who are nowadays, of course, the Sharks. He took East Perth to three premierships early in the first decade of this century. He then spent a quite a bit of time with the West Coast Eagles and now he's back at the helm at Leederville Oval. They looked done and dusted about two thirds of the way through the season. But as we mentioned a moment ago, they got on a terrific run heading towards the month of September. They'd won their last six matches of the home and away. They won last week by 14 points at East Fremantle Oval. Can they make it eight in a row today and advance to the grand final? We'll find out in a moment and get Tony McHale's thoughts on the back end of the season. But first of all, Rod Willett, our boundary rider on Grandstand Sport, caught up with Brian Dawson. And we saw a moment ago, it was a pretty one-sided affair last week at Claremont Oval, a 50-point loss to Swans. And uh, Rod started by asking Brian Dawson just what went wrong last week and indeed where they need to improve if they're to win today and go through to the season decider next Sunday. Um, well, again, their midfield was very good and, uh, you know, it was certainly a disappointing display on our part and, you know, we need to regroup and uh, rebound strongly today, which I'm sure we can. You know. East Perth's Bruckman, Zach Beck, Zach Clark have had a huge influence in their wins in the last couple of weeks. Are you aware of that? Absolutely. You know, they've really probably powered them on their charge. They've been very good for them. Uh, and, you know, last time we played them, they were probably pretty good as well. So we're certainly well aware of that and we need to, uh, you know, certainly counter them um, today to give ourselves, you know, reasonable use of the footy on, on the ground. You've probably been the second best team in the competition all year. Are you confident of a win today? Yeah, we are. You know, we uh, certainly uh, hell bent on uh, getting a chance to, uh, you know, uh, win a flag here because it's been a long time. So today's, you know, essential for that. We have to get over today. We're sure we can and um, you know we look forward to the game and it'll be a, a ripping contest I'm sure. So uh, yeah we don't expect it to be easy but we're, we're confident we can certainly get over the top. 
Tony, your side's been fantastic, especially over the last couple of weeks. Can you do it again today? Well, I guess what we've done so far, Rod, is we've given ourselves an opportunity and, and that's where we're at. We need to obviously, then we're now up against and no disrespect any of the other sides in the competition. We're obviously up against the, the, the best two sides in the competition. So, um, you know, we need to also lift the bar as well. What's changed over the last month to make you actually a genuine grand final contender? I think we've stabilised within the club, you know, over, you know, from mid-season, and uh, you know, we've got a tightly knit group, and uh, the boys are really enthusiastic and, and and believe in the direction that we're heading in. The potential of Swan District's forward line is very, very dangerous. Have you got enough tools to cover them? Yeah, I think so. Uh, we, we've got plans in place to counter that. It's obviously one of their uh, centres of gravity and you know we'll, we'll be putting a strong focus on making sure that we reduce their scoreline to a, a situation where we can win the game. Very quiet and confident, both coaches ahead of today's game. Will this be the last appearance for Luke Webster, who announced his retirement the week that he played his 100th senior game? Adam Pryor, 41 goals this season. Recruit from Wodonga in country Victoria, the leading goal kicker, given that Ben McKinley has spent some time with the West Coast Eagles, and he does re look relaxed. He's done it plenty of times before, Tony McHale, guided the team to a waffle premiership. Jared Oakley Nichols there, just uh, taking on some uh, fluid. Some Richmond experience and on the West Coast Eagles rookie list, Matthew Carr, one of the assistants out here at Bassendine Oval, former St Kilda and Fremantle player in the AFL. And all eyes on the coaches here today. Ben Colreavy, first game back from injury, looking to play against his old club, Claremont, next weekend in the grand final. Matthew Spencer warming up and Josh Roberts, who no doubt on Monday night will be fairly high up in the count for the Sandover medal. And the Sandover medal expected to be won by either Luke Blackwell at Claremont, who's already waiting for his uh, opponent next week in the WAFL Grand Final, Andrew Cracker, who we're going to see in action here today. With me in commentary, Phil Lamb and Brad Wirra. Terrific crowd has turned out. Two very well-supported teams, Brad. I guess the question is, how much longer can the Royals' dream run continue? They made it seven in a row. They need to make it eight. They need to have nine if they're to win the Premiership. Can they keep going today? I think they can. It's, it's, it's a very uh, exciting day. Uh, great initiative. The, the finals at the home grounds of uh, you earn the right to have the, the final there and great to see the people flock here hopefully the weather stays off but uh, I'm leaning towards East Perth, they're on a roll they're a very hard and very well professional coach side by Tony McCall I like how they go about their business and uh, I think that they can certainly get over the line today and progress to the grand final and then as we saw in round 22 when they, uh, or 23 to get actually into the finals, they can really match it with Claremont so uh, my money's on the Royals in a really tight close hard-fought game. Well, it has been a, a terrific end to the season, Phil, uh, and a rare one, we must say, in recent times for the WAFL. Too many times of late, by about round 16, the top four has been well and truly done and dusted, but it's been exciting to the end, and East Perth's been the team that has provided the bulk of that side. Yeah, they threw the excitement into it because they uh, they got to a stage where they just had to keep on winning matches mm. in order to uh, to play a part in the finals, and they just did that. I think they set themselves a goal to uh, take it week by week. It's the old cliche, of course, but uh, I think uh, it, it's really been borne out by the way East Perth have gone about their business in the uh, in the last uh, seven or eight weeks, and um, they just have to keep it up for two more weeks, I suppose. Uh, coming down here today is always daunting, when you're playing Swan Districts at home uh, and uh, as you said off air Glenn uh, Swan Districts have been the second best team all season but it's about being you know the, the, the best side on the day and you'd have to say that uh, East Perth if they haven't already peaked are pretty close to it. Well let's have a look at some of the key players that will be lining up to, today and Zach Beck is certainly one of them. Uh, in fact that the double deeming of Beck and Clark with Clark being able to spend a lot of time up forward has allowed uh, Zach Beck to do the ruck work and Clark has been prominent in fact the last time they met in Dampier, he kicked five goals. Yeah, absolutely fantastic. And I, I think that was, even though they didn't win that match, um, uh, Glenn, you know, Zach Beck and Zach Clark on that day were quite outstanding in combination. And uh, in recent weeks, we've seen Beck doing most of the ruck work and, uh, and Zach Clark playing down forward. It's interesting, the doctor there just chatting to him about what appears to be a lower leg injury there. If he's going back to talk to the doctor again, Zach Beck, so I'm not sure if something happened in the warm-up. Uh, the team are coming across now towards the broadcast wing or the commentary wing for the National Anthem. There's Andrew Cracker. And will it be his night on Monday night? And indeed, will he be going into 
a more nervous Sandover medal count on the back of the fact that it's grand final week and his team's playing. I just fancy him to win the Sandover because of the 35 goals he's kicked, whereas Luke Blackwell hasn't had that type of finish, and that might just stay in the umpire's minds. I tend to agree, and he's just had a fantastic season, and, and I think, uh, unfortunately for Swan Districts, we'll see him at the next level uh, next, next season, which is great for Andrew Cracker, and with the concessions that say a Gold Coast can actually pick up an Andrew Cracker for free, so to speak, with uh, without actually nominating from the draft because he's been on an AFL list before. I think you could do worse than uh, than bring Andrew Cracker with 100 games at Richmond under your belt and a great waffle season, Sandover medalist per se, and uh, you know take him into your AFL uh, new club facility. Well, we're all thinking the same way, I think, because uh, in today's uh, football budget, Phil Lamb was asked to give his uh, thoughts, and he's gone uh, Cracker 1, Blackwell 2. No real signs of nerves. The players just lining up here on uh, the commentary box wing. Terrific crowd in. In fact, if it had been a little bit brighter, the weather today, it would have even uh, snuck in another thousand or so. But it's a great atmosphere. And some players, as we saw just then, like Ashley Hanson, have experienced this at the MCG on grand final day. The national anthem. see the numbers there in front of the social club facility here at Bassendine Oval and here is the Swan District's lineup for this afternoon. We go along the uh, each of the lines there they've got super experience uh, from uh, from full back all the way up to full forward and uh, we really like uh, Lane Spanderman he's got a massive job in the ruck today up against uh, the both both the Zacks from East Perth but uh, really looking forward to, to that battle Robinson coming back in Ash Hansen's going to have to kick a lot of goals for uh, for the Swan District side to for uh, for them to uh, progress to the next uh, next round as we go to East Perth interesting as a key position player there in Mark Deves who's uh, 21 years of age he's only rolling out this afternoon for his uh, fourth game pretty important role well it looks as though he's going to get a key defensive position uh, Glenn it'll be interesting to see who he goes uh, to but I was just looking at some of the players likely to get a job today Dobson Sterling McCauley perhaps Travis on Wolfenden wouldn't that be interesting and Lee might be the man for uh, for Andrew Cracker so almost in readiness here the two captains in the middle Craig Glancy who's one of several captains for East Perth and he's won the toss opposed to Josh Roberts to the left of screen the Midland end in the opening quarter is the direction the Royals are heading uh, I'm going for Swans Phil Lamb in a word oh, I've or two. It's just two words thanks for being uh, overly <laughs> verbose let's go down and get Rod's thoughts on the boundary line yeah, thanks very much, Glenn. And what a fantastic crowd uh, here today for this waffle game. Uh, it's certainly alive and well at the moment. And, uh, you know, if these or one of these teams get through and play Claremont next week, let's hope there's a fantastic crowd there as well. 17 degrees. Uh, it's uh, a little bit chilly, but, but if you've got a jumper on, you'll certainly enjoy the game. Uh, the ground in the middle's uh, a little bit soft around the centre, so the boys may slip over. But uh, we're certainly in for a uh, fantastic uh, day this afternoon. A little bit of wind from the west-northwest at 13 kilometres an hour, and we may get some rain. Let's hope that doesn't happen either. Well, you've got to give East Perth their juice. They've been fantastic the last couple of weeks, but the big question is, can they keep going on this role that they've had? Mentally and physically, it's taken a lot out of them. They were down uh, by a fair margin in that first quarter, and they were fantastic the way they crawled and, and scratched and got back into that game, and that's uh, certainly a, a good point of East Perth that we've known and seen over the last few years. Swan Districts, I think they're going to be too good for me. Thank so you. We're split two each in commentary as we're underway. They are indeed. His umpire Hendry puts the ball up. Clancy Pierce got it and gave it quickly to Richardson. His kick was smothered, but Toomey flipped it up then and uh, got a hand pass out to Robinson. His kick taken by Josh Roberts, releases a hand pass perhaps uh, prematurely. Webster came through. Now Gapen. I think they might be uh, playing on each other. It's a bit of a scramble out on the point of the centre square. Uh, left half forward for Swan Districts. The umpire letting it go and now he's seen a push. 
And it is going the way of Swan District's Lane Spence. We'll take the free kick. East Perth bench rod. Yeah, thanks, Phil. We've got uh, Craig Glancy, Adam Pickering, Jordan Eastwell, and Daniel McCauley, and expect some fireworks between Lane Spanderman and uh, Big Zach back too, I think. Yes, two fiery characters, but Spanderman uh, making some real impact there, Spin, because that uh, Hanson on the lead and the kick from Lane Spanderman, as we can see it there uh, in replay, Brad, was terrific. Fantastic skills by the big filler there, and uh, Luke Sampy uh, gets first crack at Ash Hansen, and it's a really big job for the young fella from East Perth. Mm, a bit uh, daunting yep. the way you say yep. first crack. <laughs> well, this will have some uh, bearing on it, of course, because only uh, a minute into the first quarter, Ash Hansen having a shot on goal, and certainly by his standards, not difficult, from 50 metres, sends it on its way. Great start by Swan Districts. Well, as Rod Willett said, we can expect some fireworks. There is uh, a little bit of ill feeling has developed between these two clubs, but uh, a great start by Swan Districts, and that'll certainly give them a settler. Indeed, and uh, early goal scoreboard pressure for the Swan District side, and, and to get their home crowd behind them will be just the start that uh, the Swan Districts match committee want. And when Ash Hansen is up and going, he is one of the most influential players in the waffle. Rod Willock with the other bench. Yes, uh, for Swan District, we've got Steve Potente, Ryan Davis, Stephen Caliglio and Clayton Hinckley. And I just think they might just have a little bit too much class, Swan District. And I think the home ground advantage is a huge advantage for them. Well, he started well, actually, Hanson. Nine games prior to this, 43 goals. So nearly five a, a game. Spanderman soccers the ball towards half forward for Swan Districts. An ugly pyramid of players. Are we getting, are we getting, well, that's not ugly in just, looks, no, just in the case the mud is watching. It's an unattractive pack. Now, Roberts, for the second Bush, time, has Bush, been Bush, knocked Bush, down. Bush, Bush, Bush. The first time, it wasn't a free kick, just before the second uh, bounce Bush, of the match Bush, in the middle, but the umpire that time Bush, spotting Bush, it, the non-controlling umpire, and Swan's back half. The umpire's very experienced today. Craig Hendry, Stuart Parry and Gavin Statham on the lead Bush, and onto the chest. The mark taken by Simpson. Simpson with the left boot. Goes long, looking for Hanson again. Sampy wins that battle. So they're 15 all at the moment. Sampy at fullback. Comes out towards the McDonald stand. Marked on the chest by Sweet. He loves to run and carry the ball. Draws a couple hand passes to Lee in great form in the last two or three weeks. That hand pass was overrun, though, by Deeves. Coming through Swans. Wolfenden kept his foot in cleverly. Long steps. Oakley Nichols to Spanderman. Cassily. Back to Riggio, and he wriggles out of the Zach Clark tackle. He's kicked, knocked down by Travis. Riggio goes after his own kick. Gets it forward then towards a teammate who's upended. Put on the deck there, Spencer. Play allowed to go on. The umpire's stalking. And we'll have a ball up. So this Perth, the only score. Sorry, Swan's the only score. A handsome goal after three and a half minutes. Nothing off the footy. So Spander Man again. In ruck, a partner with a third man up on that occasion. Who was that number 16? Hancock. Yeah, Riggio, Hancock it was. He, uh, Riggio hand passes it out to Spencer. High kick from Spencer toward the boundary line. Roberts will get there first, or will he? Well, he won't get there before it bounces over the line. And you can see there in the background a very healthy crowd. The outer, well populated. And that uh, bar area just alongside the scoreboard. Always well populated down here at Bassanine Oval. Home and away bars today. Yep, indeed. A Spander man out to Cracker, to Riggio, back to, uh, in fact, it was Jetta. And now Jetta to Roach. Jetta gets it back again from the defensive 50. Short pass. Good lead came from Gapen. He's well down from centre-half forward. Luke Webster with the job on Gapen, who's been in great form this season. He kicks it out in front of Cole Reevey. Keith picking him up. Cole Reeve's kick goes to the half forward flank. Oakley Nichols took it. Hand pass to Deves. The backup comes from Sampy. Now he runs. Spears the, part, the ball over the centre circle, but dropping back and cutting it off is Josh Roberts. Short pass across almost to the outer wing, and it's been marked by Clancy Pierce. There's two bars on the outer. Pretty clever, really. They're separating the fans with an East Perth. Uh, corralled area and also a Swans one. A bit like the English soccer system. Yeah, exactly. Well, it's pretty sensible, really. As uh, Roberts now comes across on the bounce, taken by Simpson, feeds it back to Spanderman. He goes towards Toomey. With him, using the body well was Travis. The boundary line will probably win, and it has. Pat Travis, who thought, who would have thought he would have been playing uh, after the incident up in uh, Dampia? Yes, indeed, and uh, of course, if Swans get through to play Claremont next week, there'll be a fair bit of spirit in that match after the clancy Rudaforth luke Pratt incident. Now, the boundary throw-in, a high contact over the back, and the free kick is uh, going here to Zach Beck. See the replay. 
over the shoulder. Not much doubt about it. Zach Beck, who played one game with the Eagles. He's gone to Wolf. He then goes backwards to Sampy. Now, sampy has got players free on the outer side. The first link in the chain is Lee, and he can go for a bouncing run. He's taken two. Could have gone for a third with Sweet nearing to Shepard, but he goes out wide. And unfortunately, Dobson not really in the contest there, pushing the back. And the free kick is going to go the way of Origgio, who plays on immediately, goes short and to me. He loves to cover ground. Up half forward a moment ago, sweeps the hand pass to Roach. And that's almost an illegal disposal. Yeah, he bounced it, got it back, tackled, and it flicked from his grasp. Ben McKinley. So McKinley at one end, the eagle forward, and Hanson at the other. McKinley to right, full forward interference. Front on contact there, always difficult. And Seal has got the free kick. While there's almost on a hiding to nothing. And Brad Weir, it's almost the most difficult skill to master in football, trying to affect the spoil running with the flight of the footy. It is, and uh, you've almost just got to uh, run back and put the hands up in hope. And, and, and really, it is just uh, absolute luck if you do uh, spoil and uh, then you're faced with the uh, you cannot infringe just in any way, shape, or form. Just can't touch the player. Matt Seal, 29 goals this season, 36. He led their goal kicking last year. Spent some time in the reserves in the second half. Stuttery approach hasn't affected the kick, and it's one all. You mentioned the corralling of the bars in soccer parlance. It's almost a soccer scoreboard. It's one all after the opening seven minutes of the 2010 preliminary final. Really good finish by uh, young Matthew Seal, and uh, as you said, Glenn, he's uh, been up, up, up and down a little bit, but when he does get going, he's a really good finisher, and that's what uh, Tony McHale and his match committee will want from him, just to get on the end of, uh, end of the, uh, the foot skills and, and really finish well. So uh, great work by uh, the East Perth boys there in Hancock. Great uh, pressure to get the, uh, the turnover and good uh, skills by McKinlay. Interesting to see that Ben McKinlay just came off a moment ago. Come off with a blood rule, Phil. Uh, just a bit of a nick in the forehead should be OK. That's good news. Uh, one by Spanderman. Roberts in after it again. Taken it off him by Cracker, his teammate. The hand pass to Riggio. He goes by left boot. Wolfenden has it bounce off his shoulder. Through comes Sterling. Ducks the head. Delivers the hand pass out to Beck. He does likewise to Pickering. And now it's Seal, the goal kicker. Up behind centre wing. He kicks it to the half forward. And Pryor, his marking is, uh, look, his real strength. And he's been outstanding on occasions when, when we've seen him. Not only kicking goals, but taking strong marks. Talon Ames with the job on him. Prior goes past the scoreboard and again it's a seal who has found space inside attacking 50 and will have another shot at goal. Let's come around. That's it, Mark's right here. Not beyond him. Very, very good, skillful player. Similar to the angle. Well, it's a little bit. Uh, there's Ben McKinlay there. We can't see any blood. It must have been the smallest of nicks. And uh, interesting to see that Aaron Sweet also on the bench. Uh, as Andrew Cracker comes to the boundary line holding a towel. I wonder if he's got. Some blood as well. Let's see what Matt Seal can do. Taking plenty of time. He's yeah, right no, no, below the scoreboard. Uh, and I'm not too sure what the delay was for. Maybe for the blood work, was it? Yep, Dave, 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 Brian Davis has replaced him. So now Seal, a little more acute angle, certainly further out than he was just a moment ago. Sends it on its way. Not a bad looking kick. It's just the wrong side of the post. First behind of the day, and Matt Seal has kicked East Perth's entire score nine minutes into the first quarter, Brad. Good signs for East Perth. They settled now in about 10 minute mark of a final. They'd be happy with that. Just settled the game down and got the score on the board, leveled it up after Swans got out of the blocks. Line in a GPS on Wade Toomey on a Saturday afternoon. He kicks it in, he covers a lot of ground. He's gone just the required 15 metres to Ames. Back to Toomey. Awkward hand pass. Ames did okay. Toomey again. Now on to Richardson, just in advance of the defensive 50. Mm, gee, that's slack marking. All on his own out there, Davis, the man, just slipping on when Cracker off with the blood rule onto the chest of Gapen. Second only in the Bernie Naylor medal at the end of the home and away to Chad Jones of Claremont. He goes looking for his big ruckman, Spanderman, took the leap. He might have been put off by the sound of both Sampy and Hanson coming from his right. On the full. Take it. No, in fact, it is on the full. There's Andrew Cracker. Medical staff oh, looks like he's popped a nick on the forehead. Yeah, he's got a couple of scratches. One, uh, one on the cheek, one on the head. So a little bit of scratching or something. I hope they check the fingernails like mm. they do in under 12s. Do they still do that? Sampy goes up along the line. I'll get back to you on that one. I haven't Roberts seen that gathers while. off to Riggio. Richardson aims. Now on to the skipper. Roberts with the left foot. High to 50. Coming in very high there was Cole Reevey. He ends up intercepting the Keith. Hand pass, Ben Cole Reevey, low and errant. Bouncing not that far away in the end from the goal mouth, but just the wrong side 
of the left goalpost to tie things up again at the ten and a half minute mark. East Perth not wasting any time bringing the ball back into play. Swan to Sampy. Sampy just gives it some elevation. Don't know much about the kick. Toomey in best position to mark. He couldn't do that. Grubbers the hand pass looking for Robinson. But uh, stacks on the mill at right half forward for Swan Districts. Interesting kick by Sampy. It was a little bit casual in the end. Now we've got blood rule again. Now Dobson is coming off. And it looks like Robinson chasing him off his lee. And Craig Glancy, who missed last week with general soreness, will have a sore nose. Sweet back on, cracker back on, so that's good news for Swan District supporters. And umpire Hendry bounces the ball, whistle goes, there's a holding decision, it's going to be Swan Districts. So we said uh, just before the game started, Brad, that these ruck duels are going to be pivotal. There goes the uh, Spanderman kick again to the lead of Hanson. And for the second time, that combination has worked beautifully. Absolutely. Giving him silver service is the big ruckman. And we, as you as you uh, pointed out, Lammy, we spoke about the rucks and big Spanderman up against both the Clarks in, in uh, both the Zacks in uh, Clark and Beck. Big job. Indeed. Well, right in front of the McDonald stand, Ashley Hanson had no trouble putting the goal through a moment ago it starts this out right it's not going to come back and just looking to the uh, to the western end of the ground the forecast was for rain this afternoon but at the moment it's holding off and the conditions are ideal and that's what we want to hear from the uh, the game marred by uh, poor conditions sweet to sampy the man who's been playing on hansen and the defensive 50 he has it back towards the corridor and sweet who tasted state footy against victoria this year wide to the outer back pocket and Taken by Webster. The heavily strapped knee of his four knee reconstructions cruelled his AFL career and kept his time at Fremantle to just 33 games. And on current day, Docker Clark takes a good mark overhead. He's very strong overhead, Zach Clark, coming from a, a basketball background in the early part of his teens in Victoria. High to the outer side, over the back of the pack. Riggio, who's been prominent across half back, pulls it across the body. A casual but effective one hander from Spanderman. Kicks it out wide, but too far. In fact, too far in the end on the bounce for Pickering. Going in there, almost taken high. I would have thought it was Simpson, I think, at the bottom there. Getting up. In fact, just pointing to the umpire that he felt that he may have been taken over the shoulder. Nothing doing. And a ball up on the wing with a, a narrow lead being held by Swans. A a wrestle there. In fact, uh, Wolf had his head down as well as it goes to that man, Hancock, again. He kicks the ball across the centre of the ground. Seal is prominent. Spencer with him. Seal got a semblance of a kick away. It only travelled four or five metres, but McCauley is first there, right on the boundary line. Centering kick is a beauty to Dobson, and he's marked about 48 metres out from goal. Well, between right half forward flank and centre half forward, if you like, and you can see McCauley look up then, and that was beautifully executed, wasn't it, uh, Brad? Indeed, really good vision, and uh, now uh, distance may be the, the only uh, concern here. Not noted for his goal kicking, Glenn. How many has Dobson got for this year? This season so far, four goals, three in 13 games. OK, and uh, well, normally a defensive run with player, perhaps uh, on baller at best. He's got a chance here to kick an important goal for East Perth. The left foot up from right on the 50. Not a bad effort. The distance wasn't a problem. Just couldn't get it online. So the minor score levels it up once again at the 14-minute mark of the first quarter. Nothing in it at all. That's a good, powerful kick to the outer side. Marking and playing on Spencer. Gives it off to Hinkley, taken high. Right down on the boundary line. Zach Beck's just come off. Is he OK? The doctors were looking at him just before the start of the game. Is he all right? Yeah, no, he's all right. I think they're just interchanging him with Mark Deves to actually free off uh, Zach Clark at full forward. So just resting him at the moment. Spanned him and across the ground of the wing and Patenti, the only late change. He came in for the Eagles. Tony Knott. Back to Riggio. Now, Riggio across the centre of the ground. Oh, they mess it up. Castle and Hinkley, they get away with it. Or do they? Almost... Uh, Illegal disposal. Swan went through, left it behind. The ball then gathered by Eastwell. Long to 50. He, um, McKinley is down there. Gee, Riggio's been a tower in defence. This is his 10th disposal in the opening 15 minutes, if you don't mind. Onto the wing. Oh, that was almost into the back there from uh, Dobson on Cracker, but he did well. Finds Toomey. Again, I can mention the ground he covers. Patent, he's played on. Hand pass to Simpson or Clark. Knew he was coming. Well done, though. Hand pass to Spanderman and the big fella goals. See, that was an excellent bit of work to get the hand pass out. Zach Clark put on a vice-like tackle 
But in the end, quick hands. Pinkley out to uh, Spanderman and a goal to result. There's uh, Clayton Hinckley, and he was just taking, it might have been friendly fire, the boot, I think, had a uh, Swan District sock just above it. Uh, that does hurt, but Spanderman, to, to my way, I think the best player on the ground at the moment, Brad. He's going very, very well, and, and up against quality uh, opposition, as we've spoken about, but uh, really impressed in the start of that passage by Andrew Cracker, put his body on the line, just in centre wing here, fantastic. Now the centre bounce, there's Spanderman kicking the goal, free kick back in the middle, it's going the way of uh, Spanderman, gives it to Cracker, he drives it to the right half forward flat, Looking there for Gapen, Webster right with him, spoiled. While well, Gapen has got the best acceleration, goes with a short pass over the top of Hanson into the goal square. And East Perth will get back in numbers. Wolf fumbled. Now he gathers it and gives it to Sterling. He peeled off and into the pocket, accepted it, goes to half back and finds Sweet. Now East Perth have got the numbers to run with him. Runs up past the East Perth bar. Through the uh, green zone, gives it to Travis. Deves gets it now from Zach Clark. Deves running. Low pass is good to Pryor, who's marked ahead of uh, Riggio. From just outside the boundary line, stabs it to Swan. And uh, Michael Swan, what a great servant of this football a club, has taken a strong mark for a player of his size. He's very good overhead, isn't he? He is, and he's a real... Uh, Spiritual leader, I suppose, was captain. Or he's one of their captains at the, uh, in this grade. Goes with a uh, short pass. It wasn't well executed. Allows Swan Districts in Roach. Goes one way, then runs into Swan. So he hand passes to Riggio, who's had plenty of touches. So too Toomey, who's on the uh, end of Riggio's short pass. Toomey draws McKinlay. High hand pass to Pierce. That's holding the ball. Great tackle by Craig Wolf. He's one of the best exponents of the tackle in the competition. And he just seemed to be rooted to the spot a little bit there, Pierce. The good thing about that tackle, well, unlike the one at the other end of the ground, was that he tackled the football. He now lays off the uh, hand pass to a running Pickering. And Adam Pickering has jailed it for East Perth. Well, it's a very, very high class, very entertaining first quarter of the preliminary final. And after 17, nearly 18 minutes of play, East Perth 2-2, two -two, Swan Districts 2-2. Two -two. As we see this tackle again on replay, great play by Wolf, but uh, poor play by Swan Districts in the defence because Wolf probably would have been beyond his distance. He knew that, Pickering knew that, and they uh, were very smart uh, upstairs and actually got on with the job and they stole 10, 15 metres, and that enabled Pickering to get within range. It's a really good finisher and a, a good job by East Perth. Boy, Zach, back, back out on the boundary line here. I did follow him in, Glenn, and he was getting his calf restrapped, so, mate, you're on the money. Yeah, the doctor was looking at that just uh, after they'd done the warm-up. Fourth time that the scores have been level here in the opening quarter. And he ducked his head in there, Roberts, and he's going to be penalised for holding the ball. The free kick going the way of Brendan Lee. We've seen him a couple of times in the last month. He's been terrific on each occasion. He's out to Sweet, who is free. One bounce. Pressure on the Swan District's defence down there. Going up prior on the second attempt. The man recruited from Wodonga to help give them some forward focus. And he's their leading goal kicker this season. He can line up for his first this afternoon, and he's 42nd of the year. Good kick by a sweep. We've talked about Pryor's marking prowess. That was probably an easy one to take one grab. He made it look a bit difficult. Adam Pryor. Straight up. To give East Perth the lead, and he does. The biggest lead they've had. They've got out by a point in the opening few minutes of the game. They're now out by a goal during the time-on period in the opening turn. He's almost like a new player, isn't he, Adam Pryor, after missing last week with, a, with an eye? Yeah, well, he uh, didn't miss the entire week, did he, Spinny? Uh, I think he copped that uh, bad knock on his eye about uh, 10 seconds into the first quarter, but uh, a bit of a shiner was never going to keep him out of this match. Aaron Sweet off half-back for East Perth. Very impressive. We spoke about him playing stake footy and having a taste of it. He's one that uh, I'm sure there's AFL recruiters having a look at. Yeah, both of these sides have got very attacking half-back lines. Zach Clark knocked it down to Glancy. He tried to farm it off them to Lee. Having it momentarily was Davis. It was knocked to the ground. And then uh, Keith had it, and he was pushed into the back, said umpire Parry. So Jay Keith, who's very, very slow to get up off the ground, is... Oh, gee, the, uh, yeah, another errant boot. And this time it was Keith who's on the end of uh, the swinging puma. Or it's not a great place to have your face buried because there's not much grass here. It's no. just a sandy and mud in the middle. Yeah, it's just a sand trap. 
There goes the uh, Webster kick. A beautiful pass by Luke Webster. And again, Pryor leading confidently. Another lead now coming from McKinlay. But uh, that telescopic reach from Talon Ames sticking the fist out and spoiling it to force a boundary throw in. Riggio has had a lot of the footy for Swan Districts, but Pryor is becoming slowly more influential on this uh, on this first quarter. Yeah, I wouldn't have picked Riggio to be uh, manning up on, on him. So it's an interesting one. Boundary throw in. Speaking of interest, Zach Clark rucked it, then roved it, couldn't quite get it onto his uh, boot plum, and the ball dribbles about 10 metres forward and over the line and out of bounds once again. And there is Lane Spanderman. Well, there is uh, a crowd in the McDonald's stand. Zach Beck just going on. Is he limping there, boys? Well, I reckon he is a little. He's probably hobbling a little bit. Over the top, Zach Clark. Again, he does his own roving, extricates himself, hand passes to McKinlay. Then he dropped what he should have uh, swallowed. Kraken nearly had it. Now Spanderman taken up in a tackle applied by Deves. And East Perth applying good pressure inside their attacking 50 as we see Zach Clark getting to the contest. Beck. Zach Beck. Zach Beck. a bit of a hobble there, Phil. Yeah, and Zach Clark is there as well. But it will be Zach Beck who will do the ruck work, opposed to Spencer on that occasion. Goes to Davis, hurried kick. Simpson is there. Lee over the top of the footy. Now it's a chance for Travis. Good hand pass to McCauley. He puts it up high toward the goal square. Clark is down there. Offhand sweet. What's he doing down there? Bends it across his body and he's kicked another one for the Royals. Well, I don't know what he was doing down there. Maybe followed his opponent, but it was a great move to get down there because he just took uh, advantage of the of the ball that was knocked away from the contest and snapped a good goal. East Perth playing the basics fantastically well and as we watch the contest here. Just gone front and centre sweep and uh, and gets the job done. But uh, from the boundary throw in, what I liked about it was in finals footy, just take yardage, get it on your boot. McCauley just got it in, got it into a dangerous area about 25, 30 out. Sweet did the predictable thing, went front and square, let the big boys do the job and, uh, and then uh, got the goal for East Perth. The ball back in the middle, back staying down, wins it down. It'll be interesting because uh, a calf is going to affect your takeoff as a ruckman in the spring. He's either going to have to try and manoeuvre his body or just favour one leg as he springs Zach Beck as the ball tossed up again. Spanderman wins it down. Lee in the sand pit got a hand pass out wide of McCauley. Now Camilio, to 16 years of age, across towards uh, Roach. Roach on in turn to the wingman, Cassily. Inside 50, out comes Hanson. Breaks the tackle there of Sweet. Gives it off to the Wiley Cracker. He stands in the tackle, snaps and bounces it through to the left for the minor score to make it an 11-point margin. First up time they've been forward for a, a while, Brad. They have. East Perth dominated the last 10 or so minutes. Webster kicks the ball in dangerously looking for Pickering but Wolfen was always right by him Take a high percentage kick in by Luke Webster but they've got away with it or at least as far as getting away with it for a boundary throw in but it's inside Swan District's 50 metre zone at right half forward Beck opposed to Gapen Beck palms it down but straight down there to Hinkley he couldn't pick the ball up sweet Works his way through the pack, hand passes to the grass. Lee is there. Did he fall into the back of a Swan Districts player? Well, certainly the packed McDonald's stand thought so. The umpire having nothing of it. And the umpire Parry will ball it up. Close, but uh, good decision by the umpire. Yep, in fact, it's umpire O'Neill. Third man up, Cole Reeve. Gaping ends up with the football, but just taken in the standing tackle, then sat down. So once again, the umpire will bounce it down. It's around about centre half forward for Swans. First quarter, 24 and a half minutes old now. Sun weakly shining through. Beck palms it down. Diving effort there from Lee to get it to Sweet. Sweet's kick, a tumbling one, but it's marked by Riggio. Flips off the hand pass to Spanderman. Drives it long, nearly a mark to Cole Reeve. Crumbing it there was Cracker. No free kick. Yes, it will be. What's going to happen here? Is it going to be a ball up? A ball it up. Well, it looked as though Andrew Cracker was taking a little hold. Let's have a look at it there. Ran into his own teammate in Jet and then ducked into the tackle. Yep. Very good decision by the umpire. Trying to battle his way through. Yep. And the umpire. Now, the blood wall again, I think, uh, Craig Glancy might be re-bleeding. No, it might be Cracker's forehead again, I think, mean, when he ducked his head. Yeah, so Dobson with the job on him, and he's going to follow him to the bench. Hancock comes on for the Royals. And Davis comes on for Swan Districts. Dobson. 
Sorry, Dobson and Cracker just having a few uh, kind words to say to each other as they ran to the boundary. He's only a young player, Dobson, but uh, certainly has found his feet in WAFL football as Beck wins the tap, taken though by Cornelio. Hand pass to Jetta. Oh, good clearing hand pass by Jetta to give it to Hanson, who shoots at goal from a step. It goes right across the face, and that's a disappointing finish. Should have done better. Big red there. One of everything for Hanson now. A goal behind and one out of bounds on the full. Sampy playing on wide of the marks, and it's going to come back. Luke Sampy along the boundary line and finds Pickering. A metre in from the chalk when he took the mark. Great crowd in the background as he launches high towards the outer half. Back flank, big leap in front from Cracker. Couldn't take the mark. Spanderman knocks it along the ground. In fact, it wasn't Cracker, it was Jetta. Gapen then kicks the ball forward, but the whistle had already sounded. Yeah, it was a throw, Glenn. Right, and uh, a free kick going to Pat Travis, the former Peel best and fairest back in 2005 before he headed up to Leadable Oval. Travis now. Long kick, clears the outer wing. Clark, was he pushed? He was. The mark was taken by Spencer, but the umpire blowing the whistle for a free kick to Zach Clark. He had some momentum added by a nudge in the back as he was running on the lead. Zach! Come around, mate. So Zach, you're here being told to go around on the mark. There's not much space. You can find a sit on the grass bank on the outer side, which is great for waffle footy pickering. Marks and plays on long inside 50, but Toomey marks defensively on the chest. Yes, unopposed. That's a disappointing part from East Perth's point of view. Then Toomey delivers to Roberts, plays on quickly, kicks to a contest, and the best man to mark in that contest was uh, Clark. All he had to do was outleap Wolfenden, who's a much smaller man. The Clark kick disappointing. Again, Toomey is the man for Swan Districts, who repels that forward move, gives it to Roberts, to Davis. Davis, a little fumble, but now the hand pass finds Wolfenden. He was under pressure but got it out then to Jetta tackled picked up by Davis that hand pass is more constructive Roberts between the wing and the center hands it off out of ropes the speedster away he goes haven't seen much of him so far it's a penetrating kick in toward full forward Webster and Gapen a push from Webster a dive from Webster he'll recover best oh great work by Webster clears the area gives it to Sampy Sampy out wide a kick a searching one dropped by Wolfen and allows Oakley Nichols a chance so he's at uh, right half back and not under a lot of pressure. That's a little bit disappointing, you would think, as he gets the hand pass to Hancock, to Eastwell. Jordan Eastwell, long kick towards centre half forward. Ames again punches it away. Ball in dispute. Clancy Pierce soccers it forward, but only as far as Eastwell, the man that brought the ball down, and then he's holding the ball. At least it was an illegal disposal. Now he's a little bit disappointed with that effort, but a Swan District's free kick. Not much doubt the fist didn't make contact as Cassley kicks it out wide. Spanderman getting a lot of the footy as a link man through the midfield. Plays on with a bounce. Goes looking for Gapen with him. Webster again, superior judgment. Webster takes the mark and just puts Simpson on his backside. Travis marking in space. And Travis. The eye of Swans fans up in Dampier back in round 15. Gets around Simpson on the mark. Takes a bounce. High kick. No one there in Royals colours though. And Riggio again, the defensive chest mark. Yeah, they had the extra one back there, Swan Districts. Made it 4-3. to three. Riggio coming in for his 13th first quarter at disposal. One game he played at senior level with Peel before 10 with North Melbourne and then coming back to WA and opting for the black and whites. His kick went to Pierce. Nancy Pierce now, that's a good kick and good vision too, out towards the outer side. Spence is a big man. He goes to an equally large unit in Hanson. He was caught behind. Well done by Sampy. Knocked the ball down to the front. Pickering, a push in the back. Allowed the advantage. No, Zach Clark didn't realise it was his Perth free kick. That could almost be 50. And Wolfen didn't realise that the advantage yeah, hadn't been 50. Played. That is 50. So we see here, Zach Clark gathers it, looks back and thinks, what's going on, what was the whistle for? The umpire had called his advantage, he was well free, and then with a bit of a brain fade, Wolfman came in and laid the tackle, and it is bought and brought the man with a free kick here, Pickering, right up to right half forward, he's still too far out to score, just chips it up into the pocket, McKinley there, takes the lead, couldn't take the mark, recovers, tight angle, snaps, and goals! Ben McKinley, seconds before the quarter time siren, gives the Royals and their fans a very handy 17 point advantage at the first change in the 2010 preliminary final. Clamont awaiting the winner for the season decider at Sudiaco Oval next Sunday afternoon.
Inside attacking 50. Stuttery approach hasn't affected the kick, and it's one all. Hand pass to Simpson or Clark. Knew he was coming. Well done, though. Hand pass to Standerman and the big fella goals. Perhaps not always the prettiest of standards, but that's often the case when the stakes are enormously high. We're yet to find a multiple goal scorer this afternoon, but uh, unfortunately for Swans, they couldn't find much goal productivity late in the quarter. In fact, uh, the last three goals of the term going the way of the Royals to open up that 17-point advantage. Riggio, 13 disposals and three marks across halfback. Spanderman, it's uh, Dean Cox-like figures in his prime. Three marks and uh, 11 disposals in the opening term. You'll always get a lot of the footy as far as Roberts and Toomey are concerned. Hanson let himself down. Three kicks for a goal of behind and one out of bounds on the full. And Cracker on and off the ground a couple of times with a blood rule in one of his quietest, quietest quarters of the season. Just touching the ball four times. For East Perth, Sweet, run and carry off the half-back line. Sampy. He did pretty well. He uh, had his colours lowered almost uh, immediately at the start of the game when uh, Hanson kicked a goal inside the first two minutes, but he's done well since then with eight disposals and four marks. Zach Clark has done pretty well. Webster winning some good one-on-one -on -one battles deep in defence against Tim Gapen. The aggregate stats at quarter time in the prelim final. The use of handball there is quite staggering. I mean, kicks and marks are virtually dead even, but... Uh, more than two to one, Swans firing the ball round in the middle of the field. The centre breaks four to three. And uh, having a look at the inside 50s, 12 to eight in favour of East Perth. So the Royals continuing on where they left off at East Fremantle Oval last week. They trailed in the sudden death first semi-final by a point against East Fremantle in the last quarter. They went on to win by 14 points. That was seven wins in a row. They need to get eight to get to the grand final and uh, some good dominant play in particular from them. The last three goals of that first quarter in time on Brad. Yeah, they took a little while to settle as we uh, as we said during the call. Swans jumped out and got the early ascendancy but uh, full credit to East Perth. They settled. Their senior players, I like I liked Webster and I liked uh, young Sampy down back as their uh, key defensive roles on their on the two big guns for Swans in Hanson and, and Gape and their leading goal kickers for the year. Uh, and I think they just uh, they just went with a more predictable game style late in that quarter for the mm. second half where they were you know they were just taking yardage and getting the ball into dangerous areas to put the Swan Districts uh, team under defence uh, sorry under pressure the, their defence under pressure and uh, the likes of Riggio yes they got a lot of footy but just didn't do enough with it. Mm. So uh, East Perth, uh, as well, I, I liked them before the start of the game and I just think this momentum uh, of, uh, of nine games uh, can, can, can continue. Keeping in mind, of course, this could actually be the last game at the helm for Brian Dawson. Work commitments are taking him away from Swan Districts next season and he's aiming for his second grand final in three years. He took them into a grand final in his first year, two years ago, and made the final series last year. And he's down there at the moment addressing the troops and not far from that Swan Districts huddle is Rod Willett. Rodney. Yeah, thanks, Glenn. Well, uh, Matty Carr got out to the huddle after Lane Spanderman had actually spoke to them, and the, and the words of advice from both of them was, guys, we've got to get in our bike and start running. Obviously, East Perth have done very well to actually close them down and stop their run. We know how dangerous they are from half back. The other thing I think also is they're a little bit Ash Hansen conscious at, conscious at the moment. They're trying to put him one out and have him in the goal square, but I think in finals, you can't actually just have one play. You need to have all your forwards up and about at the fall of the ball, all those types of things. So run and carry is the word out of here at the moment. Land Spanning Man putting his own uh, signal on this game at the moment. He's one to watch as well. Don't worry about the other two East Perth blokes. Good on you. Thanks a lot, Rod. Now have a look at Aaron Sweet here. He earned uh, uh, WA Guernsey earlier in the season in the game at Leaderville Oval against Victoria. He's a young man, uh, Brad Weirer, but he's a young man with plenty of confidence. He is, and uh, I like the way he goes about his business and his ability to run and carry and take the game on. Yes, he might make a few blues every now and then, but I'm sure Tony McCarr would be encouraging him to continue to uh, get across the ground, take the grass in front of him and get the footy in a dangerous area. We actually saw him go all the way down and take his, uh, you know, follow his the defender, uh, his uh, opponent into the, uh, their uh, attacking and kick a goal, which is uh, great, and uh, I think he's one that could go to the next level. 
There's it, Brian Dawson addressing his charges. You see the uh, top of uh, Andy Cracker's head there just in front of the uh, whiteboard, the magnetic board with the tape on it. Twice he came off with a, a nick across the forehead there. Uh, one player who doesn't necessarily rack up a lot of possessions, Phil, but is a dynamite player in defence. And we saw it a couple of times late in that quarter. The one-on-ones, Luke Webster and Tim Gaith. And Webster has such a good football brain. He gets his body always in the right position. Yeah, and you wouldn't mind playing in that uh, East Perth back line, would you? Because it's a very well organised. Um, half uh, Luke Webster just puts his stamp on it all the time. He never panics. Mm. Doesn't matter, you know, what the tempo is like. Luke Webster has got a great temperament for all of that. And uh, yeah, in the one-on-one duels, that's when it really tells when class comes to the top. He's won most of the one-on-ones uh, against a very dangerous player in Tim Gapen. Yeah, he's got a strong body. You always feel for him. Four new reconstructions during his 33-game tenure on the books of the Fremantle Footy Club. Head and shoulders above most of his teammates there, Zach Clark. I wonder whether he might have to spend a bit more time in the ruck. We saw the doctor talking and looking at the calf of Zach Beck just after the warm-up as the teams were coming across for the national anthem. He did come off the ground midway through the quarter, went into the rooms. Rod went down. The doctor was strapping out that left calf. So it may just throw them out a bit because it's worked so well for them lately, uh, Brad, that they've had Clark Moore up forward. He's a good mark uh, inside 50 and Beck controlling the hit-outs. He is in doubt. Uh, as you said, a calf, it's really crucial for the uh, for a, uh, a ruckman to be able to uh, jump from that. And uh, Because that Clark, he's uh, got great aerobic capacity, could do both, but it robs, uh, robs them of a key target up forward. They may have to reverse those two and put uh, Beck yeah. more up forward, but you, 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 they'd have to monitor it, Glenn. I mean, if they can, depending on how the game goes, mm. if they can just uh, use Beck sparingly, if they can afford to... In fact, Zach Beck now has just come back out of the rooms. He only just noticed he hasn't been in the huddle. And uh, he is halfway between the huddle and the boundary line in front of the rooms. There he is. The team doctor is with him. It's the left calf. You can see him flexing it there momentarily. So he has been off the ground receiving treatment. See him keeping on flexing that. Uh, he's having a long discussion. It looks like he's going to start on the bench. He's backpedalling a little towards the boundary line. I wouldn't be surprised here if Beck starts the second quarter. Yep, he's going towards the dugout. So that is going to make it interesting, Brad, because he has been, along with Spanderman probably, the most dominant ruckman when they've been playing senior footy this year at Waffle Level. That's a cruel blow. It is, and uh, he's a super talent, and, and now that will change uh, dynamics for the East Perth box, and hopefully he can uh, get that right with the doctors and, and come back. But, uh, you know, fair replacement in being, being able to just take Zach Clark and yep. whack him straight into uh, into the centre of the ground yep. for you. Yeah, they'll be hoping it's not a case of uh, robbing Peter to play Paul because he's been effective up forward this season, Zach Clark, with uh, 20 goals. Let's go down to Tony McHale, the coach of the Royals with Rod Willett. Thanks, Glenn. Tony, I know they had a fair bit of the footy, but I thought you were tackling an aggression on the player, and that was fantastic then. Yeah, it was really good, you know, and that's the trademark of our side, and if we can pick that up this quarter going into a slide breeze, we need to really be good at winning the hard ball and the contested footy. Matt Riggio filling the hole, have you addressed that problem? Yeah, he was. Uh, he got a fair bit of the ball, but I was pretty happy with uh, Adam Pryor's back half of the quarter. OK, Zach, back just quickly. Is he OK? Yeah, he looks like he may have strained a calf muscle, so we're not quite sure about that. I'm waiting on a report. Thanks, mate. Thanks. And he'll come from the bench, because that's where he's sitting as Lee gets a hand pass away. Well done by Cole Reavy. Slick hands on to Hinkley. Open goal, beckoning straight through at the Midland end. And that all took about 13 seconds from the time the ball was bounced in the middle. So Swans getting a very important goal to close the gap to just 11 points. Great work here, Phil, from the Swan District Centre Square boys and uh, good finish from Hinkley on the uh, Fremantle Dockers list and one that Mark Hovey is probably here having a look at uh, with his match committee to see uh, whether he stays or whether he goes. Mm. It was good work by Cole Reavy. He just... Uh outbodied uh, I think it was Sterling who was uh, running at the ball with him and uh, got got his hands on it and of course uh, the rest is now history up went uh, Spanderman prematurely puts his head down and tries to come up with a foot he can't do that it's a real scramble in the sand pit which is the center of Bassanine Oval it takes Andrew Cracker to pick it up and sink his right boot into a gape and diving mark just inside attacking 50 so Swan Districts maybe on the end uh, of uh, a bit of um, Repeated instruction from Brian Dawson at quarter time. They've come out of the blocks beautifully in this term. Shot on goal to give them two inside a minute and a half. Tim Gapen, the man to do it for them. 
Been their premier goal scorer this season. Plenty of distance, plenty of height. What's he got with the accuracy? He's put it through. So two goals in a trice for Swan Districts and the margin has been reduced to five points. Great mark here as we see in replay by Gapen up against quality opposition in Luke Webster. Super strong uh, from in the waist is uh, Luke Webster and that's a great mark and a really good finish from outside 50. The Swan District spokes just needed to stand up after that first quarter, two guys, and what you so Ash Hansen conscious. Tim Gapen, who just snuck ahead of Ryan Murphy in the last round of the home and away to finish second in the Bernie Naylor race for the leading goal kicker. Clean possession, Clark to Dobson, an awkward left footer high over the back, gathered by Spencer, across the body, but over the head of Hinkley. I think that was the initial target, but the back Simpson, he's under pressure. The hand pass came back to him on the bounce. All gathered by the goal scorer a moment ago in Hinkley. Goes then towards Gapen, starting to come into the game. Gapen wheels around, goes long towards Hansen, takes the grab. About a metre beyond the 50 metre arc. This is where Sampy will be put on the mark. Good grab. Aaron Sweet thought he might have been able to get yeah, across I there. He should have got into that space there. Chop then. off, but didn't. Maybe beyond Hansen, although he is a powerful kick. That is just that bad luck. Flush from where he was looking into the far goalpost from behind to make it just a four-point game, but three scoring shots in three minutes for Swans. Yes, they've just come out a totally different side, and East Perth need to get back to basics, Brad, just uh, pick up men, play one-on-one -on -one for a while until they can get their game going again. Just settle it down for two or three minutes. Travis back to Webster, the player that kicked the ball into him. Webster stabs it to Lee. Still inside the defensive uh, 50 metre zone. Smothered off the boot by Davis. Puts Lee under pressure. Could be caught holding the ball here if he drags it back in. The umpire having a good look. Letting it go. Travis in there to support Lee, his teammate. Now the whistle goes and umpire Henry will ball it up. We just saw that kick from uh, Gapen to uh, have the last goal scorer and then Hanson hit the post. I'm interested, uh, Rob, when we get a chance down there, how much breeze there is blowing that direction. Doesn't seem to be a lot. Zach Clark reaches over the top, wins the tap, but Cracker, the opposition rover first there. Hand pass to Spanderman, good tackle. Dispossessed, Cole Reevy keeps the ball alive, flips the hand pass up in the air. Clark goes, he's met by Potente. Now Sampy, number 28, runs into his own teammate and Glancy, but uh, shows good composure to hand pass to Wolf. Only three possessions in the first quarter to Craig Wolf. And uh, Jai Keith, very disappointing, has kicked it over the line and out of bounds on the full spinner with a weather report. Yeah, the wind's a bit fluky at the moment, guys. It blows up and then drops off, but uh, Swan Districts are up to their old tricks again. They haven't put the flags up, uh, something they used to do back in the 80s, Phil. <laughs> well, there you go, the uh, kick into play from Cole Reeve. ended up with Hanson, who got around onto his right boot. He's now kicked one goal three, but proving to be a dangerous forward for Swan Districts. There's the angle he was faced with, his most difficult shot. One goal three, as Phil mentioned. One out of bounds on the full in the opening quarter as well, so it's been a mixed bag. Glancy, the... Captain of the day kicks out wide towards Keith and he takes the mark in front of Hanson. Jai Keith over the top, Potenti in front here. He tried to swat it away at the back. Sterling a chance, Sockers it forward. Jetter is there, clever's blind spin off to Potenti. Lovely sidestep, cracker back towards Cassily. Spencer's got it now, center half back. They can set up. Going round the outer side, the run provided off the full back line by Ames. Ames then, and not by, well, by name, but not by nature. The aim was off. He missed Hinkley well and truly on the outer side. But gee, this has been a, a dominant start. The opening uh, six minutes here of this second quarter, Brad, we were just dominated by the black and whites. Well, there it is. I reckon they poured cement into that just to make sure it doesn't look like there's any win. Yeah, it's a concrete wind salt. There's no doubt about it. Boundary throw in right adjacent to that wing sock. Toomey was the third man up. Proving difficult to pick it up there for Richardson. And now it looks like we're going to have a ball up on the outer wing. Just seem to have, actually are perfect. They've seemed to have come out after quarter time with a, a, a play on at all cost mentality and just get the footy on and run from behind, which is a really exciting brand of footy by Swans. They've dominated the first six minutes. I think eight to 9,000 here easily today. Have to be. Umpire O'Neill. 
bounces it, taken by Toomey, trying to get it to his boot. Boot Wolf was in the way, can't get a clear possession. Simpson hacks the ball out of the pack. Awkward bounce for Pickering, knocked forward by Patente. That was clever. Into their attacking 50, running onto it now is Davis. Gets uh, is proves to be a little bit too elusive there for Sterling. Centering kick, anticipating nicely there with Keith. Now he bursts away from the half back line. The hand pass missed its mark. Overshot Glancy, taken there by Toomey. Gave it to Cole Reavy. Now to Gape and hand passes back to Cole Reavy onto his right boot. Gives it plenty of height in towards the full forward zone. And Simpson. Well, he was supported down there by Hanson, who effectively took Sampy out of the contest and allowed an easy mark to be taken by Justin Simpson. Straight kick here, Brad, and they're in front. Caught it brilliantly, uh, Lammy, and it was really good work by uh, Big Ash Hanson. Just uh, made like he, he was going for the contest. Really uh, had no intention. Knew he had another player there, and uh, simple chess mark. Simpson, a pretty reliable goal kicker. The left footer comes in, makes it... Uh, a lead to Swan Districts, and this has been something of a turnaround. I was very impressed with East Perth's first quarter, but they really haven't been able to get going in this term at all, and all of a sudden, Swan Districts by three. Just the East Perth intensity seems to have dropped from uh, the momentum they had at, the, at the, uh, the last couple of minutes of the first quarter. Hasn't come out after, after the break, and... Uh, as we said, Swan Districts, they're just playing on, it's sort of a role reversal, playing on at all costs and getting the footy into a real dangerous spot. And three goals too. Five scoring shots in the first seven minutes. The clock now almost ticking to eight. And up high, Beck, she managed to get some spring that time. Oakley Nichols tackled the ground. That was almost holding it. Tackled by it, Roberts. Desperation shown out there by East Perth. That player was Glancy. And uh, taken over the shoulder, was he? Josh Roberts is down. Oh, that was Oakley Nichols, and uh, that's reportable. He's going in the book. Well, there was no doubt that was one to the solar plexus. We won't get another replay of that, but he's going into the book, Jared Oakley Nichols. That was a bit of a cheap shot. It was I, I, I say that, sorry, not knowing what perhaps Roberts might have done before the camera. Yeah, there was a little bit of the action. The yeah. But still. Often it's the retaliator that gets nipped, uh, gets pinged, and uh, it's pretty obvious what he did do. Now Roberts with it, just inside the centre square, and the skipper goes short, and Richardson has it, just in the attacking half. Some brilliant sunshine breaking through, and some brilliant swans footy in this quarter. Not so there on the half volley, able to gather with Simpson, Riggio, almost a, cl a uh, clumsy tackle, lucky not to give away a push in the back. So a bit more willing at the moment, and the margin has turned. From 17 points up in favour of East Perth. They're still not wanting to disentangle there prior and uh, Simpson. But from 17 points up at quarter time, East Perth nine minutes later and now three in arrears. Yeah, Tony McHale and his match committee only metres away from us will have some con concerns. It comes down to Cracker onto the right boot. He pumps it up toward full forward. Sampy comes out, did pretty well. A falling hand pass taken by McCauley. Hand passes a little bit dangerous, but East Perth had the numbers. Lee, a good pick up. Now to McCauley again. Kicks from the defensive side of the centre square out towards the wing. Clark lead Spencer, Oakley Nichols is there as well. Just before he went into the book, Brad, I was about to say that East Perth simply need more from Oakley Nichols, but they got probably what they did need from him. Yes, indeed, and uh, I, I, I think it's time for uh, some of their hard nuts in Swan and Glancy and Wolf to go and play on the ball and uh, really up the ante a bit for the Royals. Just three hand passes to uh, Oakley Nichols. Dobson tries the impossible. That's kicking it through a thick pack. Glancy got a hand pass to McCauley. His hand pass didn't go anywhere, nor did Richardson's really. The ball's still in dispute. Beck is there fighting with Cassily. Lane spanned a man also there, and the whistle has gone. Umpire O'Neill working overtime. We'll try and sort it out. Shake up the head from the uh, spectator there, but certainly an entertaining game and uh, a far more entertaining second quarter for Swan District supporters who would have been disappointed at quarter time. Beck got a fist to it, taken by Roberts, immediately tackled, taken off him by uh, Travis, hand pass McCauley, now Glancy to McCauley, gets around Toomey, hand passes long, long hand pass to Dobson, now onto the left boot, goes to McKinley who nearly takes it, it's going to be paid. Now, Talon Ames doesn't mind arguing the toss with umpires. And he'll be quick. Yeah. I, mean, I suppose you say he controlled it, but she was very quick, wasn't it? Yeah, I don't know if he did control mm. it all that much. What do you reckon, Brad? No, not for mine, and unless he's paid the uh, chopping no, no. of the arm. No, no, signal was a mark, the way he held the hands and no, I don't think, both hands up. I don't think uh, Talon Ames could have done much more than that. What he did, well, this is a very, very important goal for East Perth. McKinlay needs to put it through just to settle them down. 
and we see the rear view as McKinlay comes in, oh. kicks poorly, and that is a shocking kick to miss everything from there. And that is only going to exacerbate the confidence issues that East Perth has at the well, moment. That's where people think, you know, really critical professional footballers nowadays. He's on the Eagles list and has been a full-time footballer for about four years. And that is just inexcusable. As the kick comes in and in front, well read, slipping in front of Roberts was Swan. And uh, he can have another shot on goal, but that was a horrible effort by Ben McKinley, Brad. It was, and we saw him uh, a couple of weeks ago kick four goals four. So he can be a million dollars, or obviously he can be uh, five cents. But this is the man I think that uh, East Perth can turn to to uh, actually ignite them and, and turn uh, turn this game on its head. He's, uh, as we said, he's spiritual leader and, uh, and a real hard nut for them. We've been giving him two goals a game, 16 matches, 31 goals. Michael Swan, he shoots, he too has dragged it. There must be a leather magnet out there at the moment to the left. As far as the Royals are concerned, that's their first score of the quarter. It's taken them 12 minutes. Yeah, Riggio kicks the ball into Spanderman, who's playing a superb game. He goes up towards centre wing, looking there for Gapen, right within Webster, crumbing it beautifully. Lee to Beck, back to Lee. What a great season he's had. Goes for distance with the kick, and it was good too. Over the top of Pierce, it went, went to Sweet, dropped the easiest of marks. Fortunately, had time to recover. Go to Wolf, looping hand pass from Wolf to McCauley. Cuts inside Roberts. He's just just outside 50. Too far out to score? No. Again, the ball drifts away to that left-hand side. They certainly have uh, got themselves back into the contest, Brad, but can't do any damage whatsoever on the scoreboard. As the Led by the man on screen in yeah. McCauley. I'd like to see his stats for the second quarter. Hinkley's kick goes up towards a position just behind centre wing. Robinson didn't get a clear disposal away, and now the uh, pack forms. It's a standing milling pack. Sterling with the footy. He was going nowhere, and umpire Parry calls for it. Just his hard work and bustling and tackling from East Perth. Will that take the wind out of him for later in the game? One point ball game. One down by Beck, unopposed in the end. It bounced back to him. He couldn't get rid of it cleanly. In the end, Roach applies the shepherd and allows Clancy Pierce through. One bounce, gathered by uh, Hanson. Well, that wasn't a throw because he lost it in the jarring tackle, then just slapped it. Sampy over the top to Pickering. Pickering to Lee under pressure but taken high by the opposing number seven. No, holding the man. Oh, holding the man, man. They're saying, like Wolfenden. Yeah. Interesting. There's the replay of it. Yeah, I suppose you could say he wasn't controlling the ball, but it seemed to be on his palm. Sweet's kick flirts with the boundary line. Prior leaps, takes out his own teammate in front there in McCauley and will have a boundary throw in. So at the moment, East Perth trying to uh, get back on terms. They conceded three goals in seven minutes and with it the lead they've got the last two scores of the game albeit behinds back towards the boundary line gathered there and that's an illegal yeah. disposal yeah, no, there. Good decision. no real clear effort there to get rid of it by thomas roach the son of michael the jewel coleman medalist for richmond back in the 80s and glancy the free kick yeah michael roach was here a couple of weeks ago to watch tom play as uh, glancy kicks into the pocket kick lack real definition prior to, uh, applying a very good tackle there and umpire hendry will ball it up Prior and Rigger have been at it off the ball there for about uh, two or three minutes, so it's uh, always going to be something happening when those two went for the ball just then. There is Prior as the ball is bounced. Comes out there to Robinson, just managed to get it onto his boot. Dribbles the ball about 15, 20 metres. Eastwell picks it up, hand pass to Lee, another hand pass to the boot laces of Wolf. That's not where he wanted it. Cracker goes in, took one high. He's taken a few high this afternoon as the... Uh, the tape around the head will attest. Rick McCosker style. <laughs> and now Dobson's come off uh, second best in that conflict. As crack up, beautiful spearing pass across to the middle of the ground. Hinkley, they're running in waves. Spencer accepts the hand pass. Long striding Spencer now from 60 metres out. Long on goal. That's a terrific effort by Throngs. A great passage of play. They work together brilliantly. And Spencer, not noted for his goal kicking, has hammered it home from about 60 metres, Brad. Great run and carry, and great run from the big fella from down back. As we see on replay here, Andrew Cracker, change of direction, cross the ground. Really good running from the big fella. Hinkley, good vision to use him up, draw the player, and then just let the footy do the work. Saw all the players were up the ground, just kicked it over the top and let the ball do the work. Brett Fantastic Dobson. play. Brett Dobson, sorry guys, in a fair bit of trouble. I think he actually got a knee into the side of the knee, so he's limping quite badly, and he's very upset about the whole thing as well. Yes, we'll see him from our vantage point, having his head behind his hands just in front of the dugout, and uh, no one can come away from the ball up. 
He'll do it again. There he is now. And you see the frustration etched on his face. Getting some treatment. Beck. Sweet. Hurry kick on the boot. Bouncing it towards half forward. Out comes Pryor. Hand pass away to Eastwell. He couldn't gather it. Roberts, always reliable. Gives the hand pass away. And here's the speed of Thomas Roach. Quicker than his father. Two bounces. Hand passes to Simpson. Back to Roach. He's heading towards centre half forward. Awkward looking kick across the body. Goes down towards full forward though. The ball worked across to Simpson. He receives it from Cole Reeve and snaps the goal. Simpson gets his second to become the first multiple goal scorer of the afternoon. And the Swan Districts continue to apply pressure to the team that just snuck into fourth place at the end of the home and away. Tom Roach, great play. Take the game on, take the yardage, run, carry the footy, draw the player, something will happen. Not the greatest of kicks, but it was in a dangerous area, and Ben Cole Reevy came out, actually uh, attacked the footy with gusto, and a good finish from Simpson there, left foot round the body. Yeah, that was a great snapshot. Simpson is very, very good. He, he regularly ch uh, chips in with two or three goals a game, and uh, that was a beauty. One of the best we've seen this afternoon. Ball up, Clark wins it. Swooping on it, Toomey. Illegal disposal, not seen. Gapen. Hand passes defensively, defensively to Richardson. He now gives it to the run of Riggio onto his left boot. Pretty tiny disposal if it sits up for oh, Toomey. It does, and a beautiful spin by Toomey. And the delivery, also first class, or almost. Had Robinson sprawly, he couldn't complete the mark. He recovers beautifully, gives it to Toomey. Toomey chips it high, looking for Roach. Roach takes a clever mark. Well, it was touched in the end. Wriggles out of a tackle by Clark and then delivers... Well, he showed uh, very, very good poise to Tom Roach. And he's found Wolfenden, who's marked about 49 metres out from goal. Lead came from Cole Reevy. He ignores that. He thinks he can kick this, uh, Brett Wolfenden. It's a very good-looking kick. Distance wasn't a problem. But unfortunately, it's gone the wrong side of the post. So another behind. But again, Swan Districts have really uh, taken up the running in this match, Brad. They have got the uh, momentum going their way at the moment. Just by taking a chance and taking them on from half back, really impressive Roach and, and the lock. Pickering with the restart. Goes out wide towards the scoreboard flank. Flying there, Gapen. Couldn't take the mark. Pierce, quick hand pass away. Flicked up off the ground there by Seal. Travis to Wolf. Now back to Pickering. Swings it out on the bounce to Craig. Wolf had just three touches in the opening quarter. Very quiet by his standards. Off hands trying to go through. Roberts left the footy behind his. Eastwell. Zigzags, dragged down from behind, gets a hand pass forward. Cassley the only man there though, and Swans can press into their attacking half. Roberts looking for an option. He goes long and floats it awkwardly inside 50. And Seal with a bit of courage. Back with the flight, the relieving chest mark. Yes, and hand passes to Pickering, looking for options. Elects to go long into the path of uh, Sterling. He might have been unfairly taken out of that contest. The umpire says no. Toomey gets into it, gathers the footy at left half forward. He's getting as much of the footy forward of centre as he is behind it. Delivers to full forward. Simpson again, or oh, front and square. Just didn't quite uh, get the bend across his body that he needed. And you thought he might have, uh, having looking at his uh, previous goal, but unfortunately, a behind to Simpson, but it's all happening at one end of the ground at the moment. It certainly is. A 32-point turnaround in exactly 20 minutes of second quarter action. Sampy to his own advantage, and then goes long towards the outer side, coming in to meet at Hancock, but he's nudged past the footy by Spencer. So Swans can go inside 50. No, they can't. Great second effort after he was beaten by the fickle bounce there, Brendan Hancock, and he's earned the free kick. Spencer just took too long to sum up what was the best option, and got tackled to ground. Lammy, we've seen Hancock go and play on ball for East Perth. Maybe that's an option for Tony McCall as well. Yep. Hancock to Pryor as he come a long way down the ground hunting a kick. It's only just in advance of left half back. McCauley there with a short lead. That was ignored. Longer kick now over the outer wing. It clears everyone. The back to me. Trying to bring the ball to ground on the bounce. It does hit the turf in the end and players stack in on top of it. And a ball up at left half forward. Well, East Perth.
kicked three goals in time on in the first quarter. They need to do something similar here to arrest what has been a pretty ordinary second turn. Yes, this ball up in front of the East Perth Bar area, which has gone a little bit quiet in this turn. One by Gapen into the path of Roberts, took it, then he was swung around, and that could be holding the ball. It is, says the umpire. The tackle applied by Pat Travers. Certainly trying hard for East Perth. No love lost, of course, between Pat Travis and uh, the entire Swan Districts Football Club. Travis now with the ball, plays on, good-looking kick off the boot, kicks it up towards full forward. No mark taken, Gapen ta uh, taking the crumbs for Swan Districts. Check side kick across his body, Pierce the target, sweet, a good contest, gathers the footy, hand passes to Hancock, pushes off one tackle, stands up in another, releases the hand pass, but it goes to the grass. Pierce now clears the area for Swan Districts with a long kick, one on one. Travis is there, bit of pushing, bit of holding. He and Roberts go to ground, but Travis wins the day. The hand pass, however, not to the ground. Now there's a chance for Potente. In fact, it was Canelio. He hand passes to the run of Toomey, delivers nicely. Well, it had Potente at full stretch, but he gets up, and the second effort was great. Don't know about the kick, though. It's in front of a cracker. He goes to ground. Now it's Cole Reevy. He can go from there. Cole Reevy from 45 metres has drilled it through. Well, it certainly wasn't pretty, but it was effective. And once it got into the hands of Ben Cole Reevy inside 50, it was a matter of put down your glasses. He was on for a fair while, Ben Cole Reevy over the back. The boys just couldn't get the footy to him as we see the replay. Potente did his best not to, with, even with a grubber kick there, but Andy Cracker managed to get the ball in uh, Ben Cole Reevy's hands. And as you said, Phil, he's a great, uh, great shot on goal. And uh, inside 50, give the ball to that man, it's a certain goal. Young Dobson back on with that knee fairly heavily strapped, his left knee, if you can see that. And also Aaron Sweet off for East Perth with the blood rule as well on the knee this time. So might be a record number of uh, blood rules we've seen this, uh, this afternoon spin. I'll say, the ball bounced in the middle. Zach Clark, clever little flick down. Trying to get a hand pass away was Eastwell intercepting Hinkley. Gets it off then towards uh, the teammate who comes out wide. That's uh, Cornelio, the 16-year-old. What a moment for him playing finals footy. Hinkley goes after his own error and hand pass. And he goes back then towards centre half back. McKinley with his best effort, but the mark held in front by Clancy Pierce. So again, some action off the rookie list for Fremantle this season. Back to Spencer, who ran down the ground earlier this quarter. The kicker goal goes to Roach. Roach in the middle of Davis, slipped over at the telling moment, and that allowed Webster to take the easy, uncontested mark. Webster now out to Oakley Nichols. They need something from him. He's already in the book on report in this quarter. Inside 50, Swans destroy it. Last in line, it was thumped down by the Swans defence. Spencer out to Davis. Didn't slip over that time. Kicks to the outer side and Simpson's open there for Swans. He's having a great second quarter is Simpson. Swings it across his body, high with the left boot. Canelio underneath it has taken the mark, a 16-year-old. He's at uh, right half forward flank. He's allowed to play on rather too easily. Long kick up toward full forward. Hand and got into the back there of Sampy. And Luke Sampy will have been happy and relieved, in fact, to hear the whistle. Has done pretty well against Hanson, although had Hanson kicked straighter, could have three goals. Sterling on the end of the pass, another short pass. Wolf had to fly courageously, as he can do, against Spanderman. And he's come down awkwardly on the ankle, and things are going from bad to worse for East Perth. You see here, the kick was an absolute shocker. Wolf had to show all of his courage and skill to take the mark. He did, but at a cost. No, if it hurts too much, you just ask him to amputate it. He'll just play with a foot and a stump for the rest of the game. So short to Seal. Seal up over centre wing and uh, Webster perhaps has been moved forward. Spearing kick in towards centre half forward. Good mark. That was a beautiful kick by Webster. Right on the chest of Pryor. Too far out to score. Short pass to Seal, who elected not to play on. He could feel Simpson right on his hammer there. So he'll go back and shoot at goal. Not noted for being a long kick, but more an accurate kick than that, that Seal. Good foot skills by East Perth then, wasn't it? Webster. Yeah, unfortunately, uh, Wolf is coming off the ground. Hanson's come from the ground and Sampy has come with him. Sweep back on for East Perth. Up and down now, Seal, very, very important kick. If he can put this through, they probably would have wanted in too many other players' hands other than Matt Seal. He's a good, accurate shot as a rule. Comes in from 45. 
and starts it right and it just hangs out to the right unfortunately for the Royals a minor score only as Pierce sends the ball back into play for the black and whites well, they're eyeing a goalless quarter here they've just got three behinds to show for their efforts Hinkley though can't gather the bobbling ball players desperate over the top of it Glancy is in there the boundary line in the end decides what will happen a throw in so they got a goal virtually on the siren at quarter time through McKinley kicked just three behinds in this turn and at the other end they've conceded six it's a big turnaround as the ball's tossed in give that to Spanderman but taken away by Eastwell one of the more diminutive players on the field and the mark is taken by Ames he comes high now with the left boot almost uh, giving himself whiplash there having to fling the head back to see it Pierce Cracker gets it on the bounce off to Roach gets past the lunging tackle of Glancy ran his full measure goes inside 50 mark drop there by Gapen should have done better opportunity for East Perth to clear well done by Webster selfless act tapped it along the ground but Keith is kicked destroyed by the fist of Pierce Keith will get it again just throws it on the boot didn't really know where he was going or to whom in particular Spanderman flicks it between the legs socket off the ground by McCauley Riggio has the run of it going back inside the defensive 50 tackled by Pryor that's holding the ball Pryor has earned a free kick a set shot from 25 metres always a difficult one that one Glenn because Riggio in, in fact got it to his boot but uh, prior to, uh, well, excuse the pun, but prior to that, the umpire had deemed he'd already had enough of an opportunity. Yeah, you're right. Keep away. Mm. A millisecond too late. Again, they look to uh, end what has been a goal drought in this second quarter. He improves the angle and misses. Four behinds playing six goals, four in this turn. Well, if they, they have been outplayed in this quarter, Brad, but if they had have been able to sneak, say, two of those goals in, it would have just, uh, well, held them in much better stead than they are at the moment. Richardson has found Cracker. Cracker's kick touched off the boot. Deves punches from behind, lands with Oakley Nichols and releases a hand pass well to Lee. He spears a pass to the half-forward line. Siren goes just as they get it inside. They're attacking 50. But uh, it was a disappointing quarter by the Royals, but outplayed by Swan Districts. Eight goals, 7.55, the Black and Whites at halftime. Leading East Perth, 5-6, 36 the margin is 19 points. Well done by Cole Reevey. Slick hands on to Hinkley. Open goal, beckoning straight through at the middle and end. And that all took about 13 seconds. Been their premier goal scorer at this season. Plenty of distance, plenty of height. What's he got with the accuracy? He's put it through. As McKinley comes in, oh. kicks poorly. And that is a shocking kick to miss everything from there. Half time here at Bassendine Oval and an incredible turnaround in that quarter to the tune of exactly six goals. They trailed by 17 points at a quarter time, uh, Swan Districts, and they've kicked six goals, four to four behinds to turn a 17 point deficit into a 19 point lead. So East Perth, who have been virtually on um, a fine line, they've been working, uh, working or walking along, I should say, a tightrope in about the last two months. So far, they've been able to come up with a win on every occasion, seven in a row, including the first semi last week, to keep them alive. But this is a real acid test now, Brad. They've gone through a quarter without kicking a goal, having led by nearly three goals at quarter time. Uh, I guess the question was always going to be, how long could this incredible run continue? They've got to find something in the second half and quickly. Yeah, they do. And uh, full credit to Swan Districts. They came out after quarter time and it took 13 seconds or something like that mm. to kick their first goal in, in the second quarter and, and really got the job done with six goals to, to nothing in that, in that quarter. But the beauty for East Perth is they did work hard in the first quarter, got themselves that three-goal lead. Yes, they're 20-odd points down now but they can go into the sheds regroup as we have seen them do in the past on this uh, long long winning run that they've had they did it against Claremont where they lost the momentum mm -hmm. and to feel as you said in that in just in the last couple of minutes there they still had their opportunities
issues at the at the uh, uh, death knock in that second quarter. Where if they had have got those two last mm. uh, last two shots on goal through the big sticks, they're well and truly in it. I don't think all is lost, but the momentum is certainly with uh, with Swan Districts, and it will be hard for East Perth with the home ground and look this at, big crowd. Look it's at just that fantastic. Now. The breeze is uh, picking mm. up, so they need to kick goals in this next quarter because they're going to be kicking into it in the last. Indeed, uh, it's all on the line for both these teams. Claremont in the very comfortable position of knowing that they're into the grand final next Sunday afternoon. Let's have a look at the goal scorers here ahead of our halftime at the footy package today. And uh, the only multiple goal scorer at Simpson, both of them coming in that quarter to the Midland end for Swan Districts. But uh, a very big turnaround as we look at the quarter by quarter scores. It was a 17 point margin, but have a look at the dominance there on the scoreboard in that second quarter. Six goals, four to a rather measly four behinds.